Hello and welcome back to Sierra Buari final round coverage from MDG Media. My name is Elias Lukonen and uh, I will be taking you through this final round back nine. Pretty exciting action right now. Only a few strokes separating our card, especially the top three guys. Nestori fought his way into a one stroke lead over everybody else, actually two stroke lead in the front nine. Joona Heinen with some struggles, but he still has a great chance to come back on the back nine, as well as Mikael Hamme, who was only three strokes back. He was four strokes back before the round and uh, has cut the difference to three. And really Onni Rosonen from our card, he's the only player who is kind of out of contention for the win, but still trying to play four position and now we're starting our back nine on hole 10. A very interesting par four. You have that extremely sharp dog leg to the left with a mando at the very start. A lot of the players going just up and over all of the trees with a huge hyzer trying to get far left. And once you've hit the fairway off the tee, you have a pretty short approach to this basket. Usually just, you know, under 80 meters in almost all circumstances usually closer to 50 and with that fast green that's gonna be an ideal landing spot for Nestor he's in the middle of the fairway and Mikhail actually going low that's pretty rare to see on this one well you know that's kind of the way that hole was intended to play but in the rounds past we saw mostly the up and over plays And same thing for Onni. I guess they both are more of these like conservative control players. And you know, that is just a humongous hyzer he has gone for. And actually very similar position to where both Mikael and Onni are. So from here, you know, it's not a lot of distance even playing a little bit downhill easily able to get that standstill forehand to the basket though that does leave with a bit of a scary putt there's a slope behind the basket and the basket once again kind of like i believe was uh, on hole two it's a little bit higher than normal basket so Onni is going to have a difficult run there Nestori probably not going to be running it from there at all so this is kind of the chance for Jona that he's looking for he wants to get one of those strokes back. Needs good speed control here. And that's pretty well done inside the circle. He has had some of those putting struggles and whoa. Did I just see what you guys saw? And even Nestor going for it. Wow, that's very aggressive. Good speed control there. But wow, I'm still impressed by Onni's run. Ah, that's a good putt from Joana there. Able to fix on those putting errors he had on the front nine. You know, I feel like Joana, Joana might actually be leading the tournament had he been putting on his normal level from circle one. So good to see him making that one. And it's gonna be a one stroke game. And only two strokes separating the top three players on the card. Only, of course, a little bit further back. And from the body language, you can probably see how this round has gone for him. But luckily, the back nine has plenty of opportunity for the birdie. Every hole on the back nine is very much birdieable. And we even have an eagle chance later on in the round, so stick around. We can hopefully see some eagle action. Though not on hole 11, it's one of the shortest holes on the course again. Only 75 meters, playing a bit uphill, so probably distance playing closer to 90 or even 95. 
and a great shape here is a straight to the right finish so perfect for a forehand or if you have a really good late turn turnover backhand and Mikael had a good line there just a little bit short and this is something we have seen on this hole it's pretty surprising I haven't played the course myself but wow maybe I shouldn't be surprised since that was clearly the perfect shot Gonna look like he was actually going with the mid-range for that over-the-top play. So pretty interesting. Quite rarely do you see somebody going with a mid-range over the top. And that's gonna be Nestri with just a nice quality forehand. Only trying to follow suit. This is a little bit more right than he would like. But that's fully okay there. Just behind Nestri. And everybody has a pretty safe putt on this one. And <laughs> wow. I mean, it doesn't matter if that was safe or not, because he has made it to the center of the basket. Well done, I believe already the second outside the circle putt we have seen from Mikael. And yeah, everybody else is pretty close here. Only putting it in with some good speed. He's probably the least nervous player on the court, as his round hasn't gone exactly well. And, you know... He's, he's still in it for the win, in theory, you know, only still has an opportunity to win this tournament. But really being five strokes back with multiple players ahead of you, you know, you're at that point you're mostly playing for a position, trying to get that top three if possible. As we make a great star frame here. Everybody with decent pots and Mikael with that nice outside the circle stepper. And as we're moving on to hole 12, I believe this to be the most difficult hole left on the course. And in fact, it is the third most difficult hole on the entire course. Just an incredibly long par 3. Not playing quite as long as far as the pure distance, but the line that you have to throw this hole is very difficult. Quite often the best drives on this one are seen landing just on the edge of the circle. Just because it is difficult to get as far left of the tee as you would like. As that's just on the outer edge of the fairway. Should be fully okay. And you wanna hear a powerful looking hyzer. This is a great line. That's this is what you need to do if you want to be within putting distance here. And even that great shot is well outside the circle. And as we're seeing Nestori throw a great shot, this is gonna be also, you know, that's kind of what I was talking about. That's on the edge of the circle. You can see the bullseye ring just barely there on the grass. Just an incredibly difficult hole. And while we're watching only throw, you know, um, I do have to apologize for this video being quite late. We at MDG had a bit of a technical issue with the production. Some of our equipment was broken and we had to recover it. And also, you know, after that, there was some uh, personal issues within the team. Not between the team, but just the members of the team. So, you know, everything's back to normal now. And wow, everything's back to normal with only making that putt. What an incredible putt from outer edge of circle two. But as I was saying, MDG is still a very evolving company. And we're going to move forward in the future and try to minimize the risk of uh, similar situations happening. And uh, I believe we are very capable of doing it. And uh, yeah, back to action. Incredible putt from Onya, and that was not the most incredible putt from Jona. Kind of a similar release as we saw a couple of times on the front nine. That's late release to the right. And not helping his matter, the fact that Nestor is making his birdie putt there. That's going to be a two-stroke lead. As Jona has made the comebacker just barely over the rim to the left. And 
overall, I feel like that's almost the best way that our card could play that hole. You know, it's just unrealistic to think of four birdies, but two birdies on that one hole on one card is just incredible. Well done. And now the next one being quite a bit more manageable, though even this hole is not super, I um, wouldn't say it's often birdied, actually only 12% of the field getting a birdie or below on this one. The shot itself is pretty simple, you have to throw something on a slight hyzer and low. Exactly as Nestor has done, but as you can see, you have those couple of guardian trees about halfway down the fairway, which really catch a lot of discs. So many shots do you see getting down there perfectly in the middle of the fairway, and then just hitting a couple of those last trees. But not the case for Oni though, as he's gonna be getting his third birdie in a row. That's a good way to come back from less than stellar front nine that we saw from him. You know, especially on the driving. His putting was uh, decent as always. Usually he's, I would say, even better than decent on the putting green, but re really on his driving on the front nine was not great. And as we saw, Mikael also catching some of those guardian trees halfway down the fairway. And Jona, he's heading left. This is going to cause for some interesting putts. You know, there are ways to make it from where he is. But he's very likely to have an obstacle or two in front of the baskets. So that was a good approach from Mikael. And Nestor here, this would be a great make from 20 meters out and he has made it to the middle look at that what a cold putt I feel like cold is not the expression for this this situation but that's really the only word I can describe him with just picking up his mini already as the putt is falling in that's what I was kind of mentioning on the front nine when his putt is on it's really good and talking about pot being on, that's not the case for Joanna right now, as he has another inside the circle miss. And this one being just as difficult as the last, but making it with good confidence. Very important for our game. You cannot lose the fourth circle with only five, excuse me, yes, only five holes left to go. The J, it's kind of like a companion disc to the Rock, not quite as overstable. So it's more point and shoot than the Rock is, but it's still got really good torque resistance and, and it plays really well in the wind and you can throw it sidearm. Hole 14. This is the eagle opportunity I was talking about earlier. It's playing like a par four and a half, even with that 290 meters of distance with a slight downhill grade all the way from the tee to the green. It's really playing much shorter than that. You can get huge distance off the tee and with the out of bounds narrowing just about 40 meters before the basket. You know, you really need to make that choice. If you want to go for it, you're risking going OB here at the end with that OB getting tighter and tighter all the way to the basket or if you want to play it safe the birdie really is pretty easy you can throw a regular drive off the tee throw mid-range on your second shot and just have a short approach but Nestori he looks like he's somewhat interested in the eagle as he's going with a bit of a flip and that's a big drive if he wants to he can definitely go for the eagle from there Although, from his position, he's three strokes ahead of the field. He doesn't really have a need 
to go for that ego right now. Unlike Onni who has gone OB to the left. That's a tough mistake from the tee shot. It's really a wide fairway. You have so much room to the right and also to the left. You really hate to see shots go OB on this one. And Mikael, not being uh, the most aggressive or the furthest throwing player, he's just playing it to the fairway. And Jona here, going for a nice, big, high fading shots. That's perfect. Perfectly in the middle, a lot of distance. I would think he probably carried a good uh, 165 meters with that shot. So as I mentioned, Mikael being a bit more of a safer player. He has just gone with a layup and on here not going for a layup. Going with that fairway driver and trying to get it all the way down to the green. Very makeable from his position. Left it a little bit short though and that's going to be on the outer edge of circle two. And as we're running down the last holes, it's a really important shot here for Jona. He needs to get this within eagle distance to put a lot of pressure on Nestre. And I'd say he's done it. He has about, you know, outside the circle, very makeable putt. And what is Nestre doing? Is he going for it? Looks like he is. Going with the mid-range, nice skip, he's inside the circle for the eagle, what an incredible shot there. Or incredible play, I wouldn't say incredible shot as that shot was from so far down the fairway as he was from the tee. That shot was not incredibly difficult, but just in this moment, after seeing Johanna put it just outside the circle, having the nerves to put it in the circle, that's incredible. And Mikael there playing according to plan, though left a bit of a putt there still for the birdie. Probably he would like to be a little bit closer. And just look at the screen, it's so beautiful. Only they're not quite able to make it from 20 meters out. And this is really important. Well done, well done from Jona. Maybe the most important stroke he's thrown so far to momentarily get within one stroke of Nestori. And let's see. Just look at the different flight paths of these players, both Jona and Mikael putting the disc way above the basket. And then Comparing to Nestori, a pretty direct putt and you know, just a little bit of drop at the end as he has made the eagle there, holding on to that three-stroke lead. And only with a lone par, he's not going to be happy with that. It's one of the easier holes on the course if you're a far-throwing player. And this hole one of the easier holes of the course. Whether you are a far throwing player or a shorter throwing player, doesn't really matter on this one. Only 80 meters, even slightly downhill, you're kind of going over a reach of the tee. You want to throw a putter flat or with a slight touch of hyzer. You don't want a lot of hyzer as discs tend to glide more left, you know, compared to turning it over to the right. So anything that lands somewhere slightly above the basket or in line with the basket should be good. And Nestor there, he's going to be in the circle. Not quite parked. You would really like to be parked here if you can. And Jona also definitely not parked. He's outside the circle short. Tommy Tikko as a caddy, not exactly thrilled right now. And that's saying a lot if Tommy Tikko is not thrilled. And 
that was the perfect shot from Mikael. Showing off great touch once again. And this one is too far up to that sky. And, well, it's not a great shot. But we're going to have a chance to see a highlight putt from Onni. Once again, from 20 meters out. And almost able to make it. He's a really stoic player, never really letting emotions get the best of him, but I'm sure he would would have loved to get this win. You know, after winning the Junior Nationals in Finland, after winning the Junior European Championships. And Jona, look at this! Back-to-back -back huge putts from outside the circle. And once again, just look at the flight. Like, just look at the flight path of that disc it went out of the camera to the right and up and still able to drop it in incredible composure taking into consideration that he was he was not putting very well at the all the way to the mid part of this round and all of the sudden Nestore showing some signs of nerves almost he hasn't really been missing putts this round and now with only three holes left to go he has missed one from inside the circle and we have a two-stroke game with even Mikael being only four back off the lead so really anything can happen I believe Mikael will most definitely have to go birdie 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 if he wants to have a chance Preferably even get an ace in there Because the next hole is well once again one of the easier ones on the course It is actually the easiest hole on the course only 95 meters a really wide gap off the tee borderline unmissable and Really the only danger on this one is that OB left. So if you go early left like way early left which is already kind of difficult with the line being set up so perfect for the backhand hyzer off the tee then you might find the OB but to be honest it's just a basic hyzer for all of these guys either with a mid-range or if you want to throw a fairway driver or even a distance driver anything will do though this is not great yeah Jona is gonna be a little bit further out than he would like you really want to be parked here. It's such a simple shape of a shot. This is much better looking. And Mikael here. Well, not much closer than Jona. Just a couple of meters, but already that couple of meters making a lot of difference to this elevated basket. And Nestor here. With a nice overstable mid-range. And that's really well done in the bullseye. All the pressure off him and onto Jonas' shoulders. This one needs to finish left. And once again, Unni is going to be far out from the basket. You know, you can't really tell from his expressions, but it must be tiring at some point to be always outside the circle. And this time he has made it. Very good putt, I believe just on the edge. And good putt from Jona as well. Keeping that composure, that's really important with only two holes left to go. You can't be three back with two left to go if you want to win. Well done there by Mikael. And if not any earlier, this is the finally the point where we should start to see some signs of, you know, nerves or being in the situation for the first time for Nestore. As he hasn't won an A tier before. He did win a B tier, like I mentioned in the front nine. He did win a B tier last year. A pretty respectable B tier. There was a lot of great players. But everybody else on the card has won an eight tier. So you would think the experience matter is on everybody else's side. 
but we'll have to see how Nestori handles the two-stroke lead coming on to this signature hole of the course, hole 17, just a beautiful par 3, perfect for the pro level players, 135 meters, water behind being OB, all of these players are going to be going with a nice straight fairway driver, trying to just get as close to the basket as possible and this is looking really good. A precise shot in the situation where he needed it. And Mikael, this is not exactly precise. He's super wide to the right, but somehow has made it... Well, he somehow made it almost back to kind of circle two range. And Nestori, that's a nice looking line as well. Needs a bit of a skip at the end and just wow he has parked the hole with huge pressure no signs of inexperience or any sort of nerves there and rather than the pressure being on Nestor it's going to be on Jona to make his putt as Onni just another beautiful shot this hole is just being destroyed by the card right now And Mikael being the only one outside the circle. And I thought he almost made that. So it looks like, yeah, Jona is out. He needs to make this. There's no other option. And he's done it. So we're likely going to be having a two-stroke match going into the final hole. Which is, I'll admit it, it's less exciting than having a one-stroke match. But luckily for us, hole 18 does produce a lot of bogeys. It does have that potential compared to a lot of the holes on the course. Hole 18 actually was producing 36% bogeys or above and only 19% birdies. So here it is, 120 meters, a lot of OB. If you're Nestor in this situation, you want to throw something straight and never risk OB left or OB right. Don't flip it. Don't go with an overstable fade. Just hold something straight. But if you're Joanna, you're trying to birdie the hole. Throw something straight with a nice overstable finish. Hopefully fade your way into, into the green. And this is it. Time to put the pressure on. Looking so good. Just needs to miss the last trees there. And he hasn't done it. That's really the last obstacle on the fairway. And now I feel like there's slightly less pressure on Nestori as he's also going with that. He's actually going for the regular shot. No safe play here. And he's going to be on the edge of the circle. That pretty much solidifies it. He can lay up if he wants to. He can go for it if he wants to. But that's going to be Nestor Etuhkanen's first PDGA eight-year win. What a huge moment. And only there. He's also going to be on the edge of the circle. Has a chance to finish on a high note. You know, he's still playing for position and looks like Mikael's position in the tournament as the third, you know, third guy on the podium is pretty much ensured and he's just laying it up. I think he knows that he's going to be third with just a par, <laughs> even hugging that tree that gave him some love. And there you go, Jona Heinen, very disappointing, I'm sure. He had a good fight though after a tough front nine. And Nestor not laying up but rather missing the putt. Or maybe that was a layup. He just disguised it as a, as a missed putt. And there you go. That's a good finish from Onni. A player with great momentum right now. And even this tournament with not his strongest final round finishing well. And Nestor Tuhkanen, he's your Sierra Water Challenge champion 2023. What a great player, what a great guy. You guys should get ready to watch him more in the future. Sierra Water Challenge presented by Innova and 
PO Champion, Nesto! Ja jaetaan vielä sitten kaikki palkinnot noin puolen tunnin kuluttua siellä esiintymislavalla. That's super cool. What a great round. I'm so happy I got the opportunity to do commentary for this one. As we look at the final scores. Nestori first, Jona second, Mikael third and Onni actually was able to hold on to the fourth position. So good back nine from him to do that. We see a lot of familiar names at the top ten with uh, Roni Rönkönen rounding out the top ten. That was a great event. Thank you guys for watching and once again my apologies for the late um, publishment of the videos. If you want to support MDG for next year, you can do that on Patreon. Or you can just like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.